As project managers, our superpower is project integration management. We're keeping all the plates spinning, constantly coordinating and connecting the dots. We're integrating on three levels, the process level, how the processes we use connect to each other, the cognitive level, integrating all our knowledge, skills and experiences, and the context level, the environment in which the project operates. As project managers, sometimes we're flying up high like a pelican taking in the big picture view of the ocean. At other times, we're like a pelican who plunges down into the ocean to get a view or taste of a single fish. Merriam-Webster defines context as the circumstances that form the setting for an event. In this section, we're considering the circumstances that form the setting for a conflict. It's just the same as taking to the sky like the pelican to get the bigger picture view. When we're brought into a conflict, we're often not considering the bigger picture and we're often not considering um, a potential list of all these other factors that are in play. Our project lives within the wider context, the business environment of the sponsoring organization and even wider, um, that business environment exists of course within the external factors. Remember, you could use that cool acronym PESTLE to sum up those external factors, political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental. Dr. Monica Sharma worked at the United Nations for decades and is the author of the book Radical Transformational Leadership. I mentioned her in at least one of my prior videos and I'll probably mention her again. She created the full Sorry, I'm lying. She created the conscious full spectrum response model and used this model in dozens of countries where she was affecting sustainable positive change. When we hear her speak, or actually I did get a chance to hear her speak, she was talking about considering something that you don't like, consider something you don't want to see in the world, um, something you do want to see fixed in the world. And so you could look at this issue and how to fix it from a small scale perspective, or you could activate your pattern mind and see what life diminishing factors are at hand in the larger culture and systems. Since we're talking about the context for the conflicts you'll likely face as a project manager, you're perhaps not considering the life diminishing factors, but you know what? Sometimes we are, right? Um, but most of the time you're considering factors that are in the broader context than just the conflict at hand. So the broader context means that we're considering the structures, circumstances, and systems, the way things are. These structures, circumstances, and systems might be the underlying causes, root causes, of the conflicts we seek to resolve. It will be helpful for you to step back and get a better understanding of the context in which this conflict is arising. To paraphrase what Dr. Monica Sharma says, you can look at this conflict and how to resolve it from a small scale perspective, where you could activate your pattern mind and see what contextual factors, circumstances, structures, and systems are at hand in the larger culture and systems. Thus, it's helpful for, for you to take a few moments to size up the context considerations along the lines of the following circumstances. So I have a really long list for you and I'll touch on some of the ideas uh, that should be able to spark that pattern mind of yours to help you see the broader context. Historical context. The goal here is to understand the relevant background and history. Is there a history of conflict? How do the parties involved interpret that history? Do either or both the parties have historical grievances? Are they relevant to this conflict? Based on the past, what narratives are the parties bringing to the table? How might the lens of the past be tainting what was going on right now? Temporal context. When you hear temporal, you could think of time. So is this a long-term conflict, short-term, or somewhere in between? For the long-term conflicts, investigate the systemic causes. For the short-term slash immediate conflicts, look for proximate causes, so something recent social slash cultural context what is the nature of the team culture 
organizational culture, office politics, turnover rates, morale, attitudes? Are there any social or cultural concerns relating to partners and suppliers or external customers, etc.? Are there loyalty issues? Is there a subgroup within the team or another stakeholder group that's sticking together so as not to betray the subgroup? Are there friend groups or friendships that inspire the same kind of loyalty? Oh, some more for you. Um, <laughs> this is still in that cultural slash social context. Um, what is the level of power and influence for any involved or impacted stakeholders? Who are the main parties? What are their goals, concerns, interests, etc.? What is the relationship of one party to another party to another party? Is this conflict related to diverse viewpoints and cultural perspectives, cultural barriers? What is the project team size and makeup? What are the intergroup relations like? Are there any emergent factors coming into play? So for example, organizational change, agile transformation. Are there ethical or moral issues? Does the organizational or, or team culture condone or tolerate bad behavior, such as displays of anger, bullying, acting out, stubbornness, etc.? All right, the next one is the business slash project context. Where is this conflict taking place? What is the business's organizational structure like? Are there hierarchies? Does your organization have issues with resourcing? Perhaps not enough resources for project work? Are roles and responsibilities unclear? Are there resourcing issues? So changing team members, poor skills fit, unavailability of needed resources or misaligned goals? Does your organization have the right capacity of people who also have the right capabilities? What is the project structure and the structure of the development cycle? Are there tensions between different teams, business units, etc.? Is your project in a particular phase right now? And historically, do you see conflicts during this stage? What policies, if any, come into play? organizational policies, governance, project governance? Is there a lack of participation, communication, access to resources, poor communication? Are external stakeholders such as partners and suppliers or external customers involved? And if so, are there any relevant structures, systems, and circumstances that you should be considering here? Are there organizational change issues like those that stem from restructuring? Are there ethical or moral issues? Is the company image great or is it poor? Does the business promote growth, development, and psychologically, uh, sorry, psychological safety of its employees, right? Psychological safety is really, a, is really, really key also, a lot of times we're hearing about safe to fail environments where we could have experiments and fail so we can learn and grow. If you're watching my videos because you're prepping for the PMP exam, recall that one of our guiding principles as project managers is to recognize, evaluate, and respond to system interactions. This is outlined in the PMBOK 7, which states in part, that a project is a system of interdependent and interacting domains of activity and that systems thinking entails taking a holistic view of how the project parts interact with each other and external systems. When exploring a complex context, asking yourself about these domains and taking a holistic view can be quite helpful. The goal of the guiding principle, recognize, evaluate, and respond to system interactions is in part to be able to positively affect project performance. Getting to the root causes of conflict will certainly help us to achieve a positive outcome. Another context to consider, the external context. Again, PESTEL is a great acronym. It covers all the external factors, political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental. Do any of these factors come into play? Other dimensions of context. So the list that I just 
or all these like different lists with their subcomponents. I was just, I put together for you. Um, it's not really an exhaustive list. I just did my best. Uh, depending on where, how, and with whom your project is running, there might be even more circumstances for you to consider. It can also be helpful to think of the overall scope of this conflict and the ramifications of any negative impact. So how, are, how, how many parties or groups are involved? Is this localized, meaning team specific, or is there a wider audience? Does this affect key stakeholder needs, the business environment as a whole, or are there two team members in conflict here? Scope. Which project management domains does this tie to? One or a few team project work stakeholders? Does this relate to risk, quality, or compliance? How does it relate to the solution? The solution being that ultimate product service or result that is the deliverable of your project. Or is it related to a project sub-deliverable? Is it related to the ultimate deliverable? What is the potential scope of impact of this conflict or its lack of resolution? So in short, it's important to understand the context in which you're running your project in general, as well as when navigating a conflict. There's a classic, an uh, sorry, a classic anecdote about needing to rescue kittens floating uh, down in a stream. And the question says, at what point do we look upstream to see who's throwing these kittens off the bridge in the first place? In addition to, or in conjunction with the considerations I, I talked about today, Fisher et al's classic conflict tree might be helpful for you to check out. It talks about context and structures. It's something you could Google, conflict tree, um, but it, it shows these three factors. So number one is structural factors, the root causes. So the roots of the tree, um, the true reason for the conflict. So actually maybe I'll make a tree like this. So think structures, systems, and circumstances. Manifest issues, this is the trunk. It represents the topic of your conflict. And then the dynamic factors, these would be all your leaves representing what's going on, the effects, the communication or miscommunication, relationship aspects, intensity. So what's the escalation level? Another potential tool to consider when it comes to understanding conflict context is the dividers and connectors analysis. In part, this tool looks at the factors that bring people together, connectors, and the factors that push people apart, dividers. In doing so, you're able to better understand and analyze the context. I'll try to find you some links, but these are very Googleable classic models. and. There you have it, lots of context, so much more than you could have ever hoped for, right? Lots of context for you to consider when stepping in to resolve a conflict. See you next time.